I disagree with you a little bit on that last point. I don't think Kamala Harris really has a political identity. I think Kamala Harris will kind of change her political identity depending on what she thinks is beneficial for her in getting elected. Anna Kasparian and Cenk Yoger go head to head with Patrick Bet David over Trump's recent victory. Let's check it out together and see what they had to say. I'm a populist, uh, so I can't stand the donor class and the establishment, etc. I think the Democratic Party lost not because they used corporate robot A versus corporate robot B. I think that they all would have lost. I think that uh, I think DeSantis probably would have lost. I, I think that uh, Trump has a gigantic advantage because he appears to be authentic, he appears to be populist. I've been on your show, you know that I don't think he actually is populist. So that brings us to the question, which is, Look, there is a real rift in the Republican Party for the first time in my life. In the old days, it was always, no, Mitch McConnell and Dick Cheney and George Bush are wonderful people. And they're, God, it just, the donors need everything. And thank God Mitch McConnell got it to them, right? And now I know a lot of people hate Mitch McConnell and they don't like the donor class, they become more populist. But I'm worried about their authenticity. I'm worried that if Trump starts to do all the things that are not at all populist, but the old Republican way of give everything to the corporations, give everything to the donors, guys aren't really going to object, and that your audience would be mad at you if you objected. And so I'm worried that 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 there will not be any kind of populist, not in, not only an uprising on the right, but an, even an objection on the right if Trump begins to betray his promises, does more I, war I, I in the Middle East, etc. Yeah. I don't disagree with you. And by the way, you have to also realize, uh, even on the right, after uh, what happened with Hamas and Israel, the conservative had different factions that that you would look at on the positions that they had. Yep. And the you know military industrial complex community is like, hey, why are we trying to go to war? This John Bolton guy, this this all these you know Liz Cheney is now this incredible woman that. Whoopi Goldberg on the view. Oh my God, Liz, you're so amazing. If you're enjoying this content, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Her father was like the ultimate military industrial complex. Now the left is kissing her ass. What the hell happened to the left? The, mm -hmm. the one area with Trump that you got to give him credit for, he doesn't want war. And he said it and he did it while he was in. And I don't know if you guys saw what Dmitry Medvedev said a couple days ago when he came out and he said, if Trump even thinks about trying to prevent or get in the way of our war with us and Ukraine, there will be a JFK type style assassination. I'm sure you saw that. And then he came out and he says, Kamala Harris is dumb, is stupid, is uneducated and controllable. I think these are some of the words that he used against them. So of course, you know, the position that he had for the first four years doesn't want war. Is he going to go out and all of a sudden be pro-war? If he does that, Jenk, the, the, the base that supported him is going to be very, very loud. And Anna against Kasparian comments that she doesn't think Kamala Harris has a clear political identity. Instead, she believes Harris shifts her views depending on what she thinks will help her get elected. Jenk Yoger, identifying as a populist, criticizes the donor class and the influence of establishment politics. He feels that the Democratic Party lost because it tends to promote corporate-driven candidates who don't appeal to average people. Jenk argues that Trump has an advantage because he seems authentic and populist, even though Jenk himself doesn't believe Trump genuinely holds those views. He expresses concern that if Trump reverts to traditional Republican policies that favor corporations and wealthy donors, his supporters might not hold him accountable, even if he breaks populist promises or pursues military actions. Patrick Bet David responds by agreeing and points out that, even among conservatives, there are differing views on topics like foreign involvement, especially after the recent conflicts in Israel. He notes how some on the right, who used to fully support military action, are now questioning figures like John Bolton and Liz Cheney for their pro-war stances. Patrick gives Trump credit for generally opposing war during his time in office, and he shares a recent statement from Dmitry Medvedev, a Russian official, warning Trump about opposing Russia's goals. Patrick believes that if Trump changes his stance and starts favoring military intervention, his base will push back loudly. If you enjoy content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts in the comments below. It really helps support the channel.